so we're gonna do some exam solutions. So problem one from the, the term exam is uh, write one or two sentences in response to each of the following questions and imperatives. The use of equations is acceptable when they appear in a sentence. Don't quote me, use your own words other than technical terminology. So the first part is describe a couple differences between MOSFETs and op amps. So that's what we'll begin with. Um, I would say that the, the first uh, thing to remember about MOSFETs and op amps is that uh, they're both, I'm not gonna do complete sentences because I'm talking to you guys. So uh, they're both nonlinear, but op amps can act linear when they're um, in feedback. When uh, using feedback. So, uh, op amps. So this is um, uh, unlike the MOSFETs. The MOSFETs are are just nonlinear. Um, there's no feedback that you can use to make them linear. Um, the another big difference is that MOSFETs um, don't actually supply power. Um, they do tend to be used in tandem with another power supply, but uh, uh, MOSFETs are technically passive. Um, whereas op amps are active. But um, we so frequently use MOSFETs, at least in mechatronics engineering, to um, uh, gate a source that uh, we often start to think of it as being a source. And so sometimes we are a little bit fast and loose about it and think of this as being a voltage controlled current source because um, it's a current gate essentially um, well so I'll say source but in quotes whereas the op amp is a voltage controlled voltage source proper okay so then we've got, uh, see, is there anything else? Oh yeah, two, per, two port versus four port. A lot of you picked up on that, which was good. Two port um, versus four port. So the op amps, four port element, whereas the MOSFET's two port. Okay, so that was, that was plenty. I was pretty lenient on that one, all of them, really. Uh, okay, so if a DC source, too, if a DC source is connected to a circuit in steady state, describe how an inductor in the circuit will be operating. So um, you have to, I guess, make the assumption that there's no AC source connected to the circuit, but um, assuming that there is none, uh, when there's a DC source connected to a circuit and it's in steady state, that means that all the voltages and currents in the circuit are going to be unchanging. They're going to be steady with time. And when that's the case, if you look at the inductor's elemental equation, the I L D T equals one over L times V L. Um, we see that if D I L D T is going to be zero because it's not going to change, I will be a constant zero. This implies that the voltage across the inductor will be zero and that implies that this behaves like a short, right? Or just a wire. So it just looks like a wire to a, um, a DC circuit in steady state, you could say. Uh, okay, 1.3. Um, if a transformer increases an AC signal by voltage by a factor of 119, what happens to the signal's current? So, if we go back to the elemental equation for a um, um, transformer, we know that we are trading off voltage and current. I accepted, so there's, um, so it's actually the negative reciprocal, so 
um, effectively the current out of the transformer is going to be negative 1 over 119 times the input current. If you just said uh, 1 over 119, I gave you credit for that, um, but it is technically the negative reciprocal. So it's just the direction it's flowing. But the idea is you're trading off voltage and current with the transformer. So if you step up the voltage by 119, you step down the um, voltage by, uh, or the current by 119. So this is um, also, 119 is a number that I like. If you guys want to find out why, watch all of David Lynch's um, uh, Twin Peaks series all the way through the new season, and you'll and you'll see why. Um, okay, uh, that's not a homework assignment, but it's worth it. It really is. Okay, so then um, what's the next one? One four. How do we determine the diode resistance for the piecewise linear model of a diode? I accepted all kinds of answers for this. Essentially. Um, the idea is, I just wanted to give you, have you guys give some sort of justification for how you choose RD. Um, usually it's some sort of uh, uh, iterative method, uh, uh, or you could use a, um, even a single uh, attempt method to estimate what the current is that's going to go through the diode. Um, usually we start out with RD equals zero. And then we use that, do the whole circuit analysis, find out how much current was flowing through the diode. And then we say, OK, so what was I D? Um, if, if I D is significant, if it's, if it's like you know hundreds of milliamps at least or something, um, then we can go to the to the curve that is the current through the diode. You might remember that curve, uh, very nonlinear curve. It's zero before the um, diode turns on, and um, we we say okay, uh, if the current's significant, that means that we're up here somewhere. We can find a linear approximation. If the current's not very significant, we just leave our estimate of R D equals zero alone. Um, so that's, and then the slope here is 1 over RD if you're going to use an operating point to test it. So that's just, you know, that's about the level of, of description I wanted, um, or even less than that would have been fine. And, 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 and several of you got that. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm going to do problem by problem, so I'll stop this one and start the next one.